Hey y'all, this your girl Key, back with Key's Corner. I'm here to give y'all another episode. Thank y'all for being so patient with me. I have been, y'all sorry, I'm like, not my, all my instincts and stuff. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for me to post another video. Um, yes, I am definitely working on um, posting more frequently. Um, you know, I've just been working on some things that we're going to, um, talk about what I've been up to lately. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about what chakra I'm working with right now. Also give you guys a reading and some crystals and just, just talk to you guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay. So if y'all see me looking down, um, I have notes. Okay. So I like to keep notes. Um, just so I can keep myself on track. Um, so we are going to start with how I've been and what I've been up to. So for, yeah, like the past month, maybe, I've been working on my root chakra, okay? Um, setting a firm foundation for myself, getting some structure, some discipline going on. Um, you know, just trying to do things differently for myself right now. Um, seeing that I am more invested into my spiritual work, my emotion, my emotions, um, where my mental space is, you know what I'm saying? Just all in all, just where I, where I am and where I want to go. Sorry if this smoke is bothering y'all. Let me try to turn this. Um, I hope this smoke is not too distracting. Um, anyway, so yes, I've been working on my root chakra as well as you know just taking some um, personal time to myself just getting energized um balancing out myself and where i've been you know what i'm saying so that's been a, a process for me <laughs> let's just say that but you know moving forward i feel great um i can't i really can't complain you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna talk to y'all about my root chakra what they represent. I don't know if anybody is working through their root chakra right now, but if you want to, these are some of the things that have helped me on my root chakra. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about what's going on or you want more information on how to work with your root chakra, some of the things that you can, or some of the tools that you can use to help work through your root chakra problems, um, you guys can let me know and I can give you guys some information. I'll just give you guys information right here, right now. Um, so yeah, root chakra is the very first chakra and it represents the color red, okay? And this chakra represents your foundation, um, basically your family, where you come from, how you live, how you survive, um, all those things, okay? And uh, the color is red. This is representing your grounding energy, okay? What keeps you grounded? So I've been working in finding what keeps me grounded, what keeps me uh, balanced, you know what I'm saying? So the element is earth, earth element. Um, so if you need a lot of what? Virgos, Capricorns, Taurus, they're very earthy, earth energy, you know what I'm saying? So they can help a lot with just being grounded if you're possibly some other zodiac sign. They can also help with being grounded. Um, the esoteric anatomy is physical manifestation of core energy. And so this is where the source of your energy comes from. If your root chakra is off balance, then the rest of the chakras are going to be possibly off balance. You know what I'm saying? So getting your root chakra in order, um, making sure that you have a firm foundation to build on because you can't build on a faulty foundation. You're just not, it's not going to work like that. Um, so, you know, just trying to be more grounded in everything that we do, um, having a grounded thought process, having a, a solid foundation to build on, you know what I'm saying? Um, also, so some of the deities and these deities are basically just energies that reside in us and that we can work with to bring out this grounding energy to help us balance ourselves out. So these, like I said, these deities are just energies that reside within us. So some of the deities that I have for you guys today is Aset, Isis. Um, if you guys don't know who these are, you also can look them up, study them yourself. I'm just going to name them for you. And these are some of the deities that help being grounded or that can help you get grounded. Okay. So, um, if you have like an altar space or you go into like prayer or something or whatever you do 
if spiritually you guys want to connect with them you know just call them out ask them to help you um help assist you on your um root chakra journey and they will definitely come and just give you guidance and everything like that um so i said which is isis we have geb segment olodumere onile asaka who else would we have But y'all, I can't read my own hair right in, and it's because this <laughs> this camera light is too bright. Um, Shakti, Kundalini, Ganesha, and in Europe, we have Gaia, Persephone, and all the earth goddesses, okay? And like I said, these deities are basically just reflections of uh, ourselves that resides within us, okay? The planet that you can also look forward to that will help you ground is Saturn. So if there's any Saturn in your chart or whatever your sign is in Saturn, that is also what can help you uh, get grounded as well. Physical correspondences that we have is basically the body, um, the physical body. You know what I'm saying? How do we build from that? Or how we carry ourselves or what we look like, how we take care of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That's survival or... Um, you know, based on what you look like, it's basically, you can tell how people live. Not all, all people, but you know what I'm saying. A lot of people <laughs> judge you from the outside based on, you know, what you look like. You could possibly have a faulty foundation. Um, so some of the things that could go on with a balanced root chakra or an unbalanced root chakra. So with the balanced root chakra, you have balanced emotions with which is basically feeling safe, secure, um, excited, um, acceptance of your physical form, <laughs> um, and its limitations. Unbalanced emotions are fearful, rigid, restrictions, feeling held back, lethargic, weighed down, unmoving, unmotivated, um, just not wanting to do shit. And most of us catch ourselves there sometimes. You know, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but for me, myself, I'm kind of like in between. So as I do this work, as I continue to progress in my journey, um, just finding um, stable ground to be on or to get on, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a Pisces, we tend to be um, very watery, very airy sometimes, or just kind of all over the place. And that's not necessarily the best thing, you know what I'm saying? So um, as like I said, as I do this work, I'm finding myself getting more grounded and having a consistency in something, having a foundation, even as I do my cards, just having something to do every day, finding discipline in small things, one step at a time, baby steps if you have to, just doing something new every day and being consistent with it um, is what I'm really, really learning for myself right now, consistency, you know what I'm saying, and going from not being consistent with something at all to finding something that you want to be consistent with, um, you know, you kind of just have to keep up with it and work hard and just you know don't be too hard on yourself but at the same time you know you have to move forward you have to keep going okay so that's where I find myself is just gaining more di uh, discipline um, clarification for myself uh, and just building a firm foundation for myself okay um, some foods that we can um, eat to help you ground as well is any root vegetables any root fruits okay any red fruits um anything that comes from the earth you know what i'm saying can definitely help you ground some herbs that you can use is comfrey and licorice some oils that you can use is patchouli cypress um vetiver i think that's how you say it also some gems and stones that you can use to help you meditate and get grounded you guys can hold these in your hands put them on your body uh put them in your bathtub when you do your spiritual baths or just whatever you got whatever feels comfortable for you okay um we have red jasper garnet um smoky quartz obsidian ruby black star sapphire and red jade okay so all of those crystals can definitely help you with your root chakra getting grounded uh, accessing this earth energy to embody so that you can feel more balanced and get more balanced you know what i'm saying um some disturbances that might occur when your root chakra is out of balance is restricted energy flow um can come from like i said rigidity fear of change stubbornness laziness nervousness and lack of confidence um a dislike in natural things like water dirt um 
anything earthy. It's like, oh, I used to be so picky about getting my hands dirty, y'all. Like, those that know me know, like, oh, I hated getting my hands dirty. It was just something about my hands getting dirty. And it's just like, that's normal. Or just like having dirt on your hands. Y'all, I used to be so picky about that. But it's like, I've come a long way, okay? I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> So, or like getting wet from like rain, you know what I'm saying? Simple things like can literally drive people crazy sometimes. But um, a lot of those things can be disturbances that occur in the root chakra, possibly finding out what that disturbance is, why you don't like it, and getting to the root cause of the issue or the problem for yourself. Um, also, um, over attachment or a tendency to hoard uh, materialism. Um, dissatisfaction, 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 sorry, I can't get that out, or dislike of your own body, okay, so, um, that is some of the things that can occur whenever your root chakra is out of balance, so with the more firm, stable, uh, root chakra you have, a lot of discipline, um, you can get a lot of things done, you're very focused, um, you love yourself, you know what I'm saying, just all positive things come from having a balanced root chakra, so if you find yourself feeling a little out of whack and um, a little off balance, you can definitely um, just try to meditate or just see what the cause of the problem is dealing with your root chakra or just kind of just going within and really taking a look at yourself to understand what the issues might be. Um, but I know for myself, speaking for myself, a lot of the issues have come from my root chakra and just um, a, a not having a, a firm foundation to build on. Um, a lot of root chakra problems can come from bad family environments as well. Um, so if people are draining you or you just don't feel like you are capable of staying in a place that is um, pretty toxic for you, um, you can just kind of try to find ways to get out of that or just try to find ways to help balance yourself out in the midst of chaos. You know what I'm saying? It's called um, balance, balance chaos or chaos. I can't even really get it out right now, whatever. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to let you guys know that that's what I've been working on. If you, Like I said, if y'all want more information, another thing is um, the book that is helping me right now is called um, Opening to Spirit. And um, I don't have it with me in the library, but I can take a picture of it and post it up with the video. Um, yeah opening to spirit so this book basically walks you through all of the chakra systems meditations deep breathing that you can do altar work that you can do um just a lot of different things and information that you can gain from this book while working through your chakras has tons of information okay so like i said i'll take a picture of it post it up on here so if you guys want any questions or anything like that you can just go buy the book for yourselves and just do the work yourselves so you know like i said i just want to assist you as i assist myself so yeah um altar work so for my altar um how i set up my altar for my root chakra is i have a red like tablecloth and you can do anything red brown anything earthy um red brown um yeah so or a deep deep dark color you know what i'm saying so my altar is set up with like a red tablecloth i have all four elements on my altar just to balance out the energies within myself so i have earth air water and fire and then i also have a little space for spirit um just so that when I'm sitting there doing my meditations and everything, it's just easier to get in touch with myself, get in tune with myself. So, um, yes, yeah, so I have all four elements. I keep incense and oils on my altar. I also keep Isis on my altar right now as well. So, um, as I do the work and everything, you know, it's just easier to access my highest self with doing the work on my altar space i also keep uh four red candles on my altar space as well and maybe some white ones just to balance out the energies but these red candles help you as well because they assist in you know loving yourself getting grounded passion um all these different things that can basically you call on these these energies and everything and they will basically embody you you will embody these energies and be able to balance yourself out um yeah, so I have 
all of that on my altar. What else do I have? I have some crystals. Um, I have like this little tree stump that I actually got from um, Earthbound. Okay, so it's like a little instant holder, but it's a tree. And he has little mushrooms on him. He's so cute. I love him. I haven't named him, but he's just like a little tree stump. He looks like Groot a little bit with mushrooms. So I love that little thing and it smells so good. So yeah, that's what I keep on my altar. So if you are working on your root chakra or something right now, that is um, some of the things that you can keep on your altar. And you know, you just sit in that space whenever you're feeling a bit unbalanced or a little um, just off. You know, go take about 10 to 15 minutes to go meditate, sit there, tune into yourself, understand what's going on, and you know, leave that there and move forward, okay? So yeah, that is the root chakra phase that we are in, okay? Um, like I say, y'all have any questions or anything, contact me, okay? And I appreciate all y'all's support. So moving forward, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the reading for the day. And yeah, let's check it out. So thank y'all for sticking around for the reading. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into that. And like I said, if y'all see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. I like to keep myself on track, okay? I'm gonna shuffle my cards and let's get into this. All right, and this is just a collective reading for anybody that wants to tune in. If the message resonates with you, then it resonates. And if it doesn't, leave it, okay? Um, pass it on to somebody else. Pass it on to a friend or family member if they need a word of encouragement or just some kind of guidance right now. Um, you guys can share this video with them and this reading with them and just, you know, kind of help somebody else on their journey, okay? So, again, this has been a very, very, very enlightening time for me. I hope that all is well with all of you guys. I thank y'all for being patient with me and I really appreciate all of the love and support that y'all give me with just moving forward and keeping focused and just y'all really just being behind me on all of this. Like, you guys are so great and I never really would have thought that I would have this much support. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say that I never really would have thought about it, but now that I'm actually doing this and like, you know, it's it, y'all fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanna help people just like I help myself. Not necessarily, you know, help others but it's just like we all need a little push you know what i'm saying and if, if this is a way that i can help push people in the right direction uh, within themselves this is what i'm gonna do okay feel better once I get in front of the camera and start talking to y'all <laughs> I be like really going back and forth with myself like do I want to do video today blah 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 like y'all I'm sorry I really am sorry that's probably selfish but I'm working on it okay like I said I always feel better once I get in front of you guys these cards do not want to show what y'all got going on today Also, if you guys do want to book a reading, um, I will leave the information down in the description box. Um, I am getting more and more clients as the time goes by, and I appreciate you guys for just allowing me to help you or just allowing me to assist you, and thank y'all for trusting me to assist you. Um, you know what I'm saying? Initially, you're just trusting yourself to trust me, so I appreciate that, and you know, it's been great to just give you guys readings and give you guys insight on y'all's journey. I've had some really good feedback, you know what I'm saying? It's so great to hear and just being able to be there for other people. Like I've been just, you know, being there for myself, okay? So I'm gonna just pull three cards. All right, so at the bottom of the deck, we have the page of emotions. And the first card that we have is Six of Emotions, okay? I don't know if y'all can see that. 
it's a lady with her inner child in a wheel okay so and the child is playing and then there's another little woman on the opposite side sitting on the beach so with this um card the past energy is basically what feelings or beliefs um in the past events have shaped your current situation and for the six of emotions it's basically familiarity happy memories and healing okay so a lot of us are possibly healing ourselves healing our inner child healing our inner wounds getting to the root cause of the problem if you guys see this um there's a child here with a red um what is it suitcase and he's playing okay so again that red suitcase represents our root chakra so a lot of us might have grown up in a really bad family environment maybe a being abused as kids um i know a lot of people have gone through that okay so a lot of us have to get down to the issues of our problems get down to the root cause of our problems and learn from these issues and basically go in within and heal our inner child as we do this work as we go within and we talk to ourselves and we talk to our inner child we tend to meet ourselves face to face if it's me and my inner child meeting ourselves one-on-one -on -one. we're having a conversation just about everything that my inner child had possibly gone through as a kid forgiving myself um for possibly feeling however i felt from growing up from that you know what i'm saying so healing that inner child being a little bit more playful um overcoming hardships of our natural inclination to to bask in the comfort comfort of familiarity okay so not getting stuck in just things that we're, we're familiar with allowing ourselves to be open allowing ourselves to be free so that we can move forward and where we're supposed to go but if you don't create healing in your life you're going to carry that over into the next phase of your life and then it's just going to be a continuous cycle of um unhealed trauma unhealed um issues that will occur in every relationship or even your personal lives or even your work you know what i'm saying like it tends to clash together so what we do want to do is go within take time to yourself take time to heal your inner child take time to really just look at yourself and understand um things that might possibly try to hold you back you know what i'm saying so moving on from that you know just creating happy memories for yourself um, creating brand, a brand new life for yourself, you know what I'm saying? But you got to heal first, okay? Moving forward in the present future, present um, energy and present card that we have is the seven of inspiration. And this card basically is what forces are working with you right now, what events are influencing your situation, okay? So we have perseverance, um, defensiveness and maintaining control okay so with this card this basically is to me like um someone trying to dim your light okay so you're in like a, a really dark place and you have this bright light um within you and she's like trying to hold these walls open from crashing down on her so with that it's like we all have this light and sometimes these forces on the outside of us can be really overwhelming and can really try to shut us down and bring us down and just have us to be in a place of distraught you know what i'm saying so when we're in this place we have to go within as well we have to stand strong in who we are don't allow that shit to come in you know what i'm saying push those forces out allow that light to shine through you know what i'm saying so basically just just you know not being so closed off but still allowing yourself to remain open and just like i said taking time to yourself taking time to persevere and push through you know what i'm saying saying like i'm so stuttering right now i whew, give me a moment let me get some water i tend to start running it when I'm doing readings for y'all and shit. So, um, yes, maintaining control, maintaining the balance that you have within yourself. Um, that takes a lot of energy sometimes, you know, but these forces tend to try to be stronger than we are, but we are stronger, you know what I'm saying? So taking that time to really just push through, push through. If something is hard, I've been, this saying stuck with me 
Um, I heard it probably earlier this week and I repeated this to one of my clients earlier and it was basically saying that if you're in a hard place, do something that is very hard for you for as long as you possibly can. And if you don't get that quote, it makes a lot of sense to me. But doing something that is very hard for you for as long as you possibly can, do you know how much character you gain from that? Do you know how much um, strength you gain from that? It's just being strong within yourself, just knowing like, oh, I gotta push through, I gotta push through because on the other side, um, what, what you will manifest will be so great. So if something is hard for you right now and you really feel like you can't push through or you really feel overwhelmed emotionally, mentally, and there's just a lot of chaos, push through. That's what I want to tell y'all. Like really, really push through, stay focused, go within, cry if you have to. I think I've cried more this year than I can possibly even think. And it's just me balancing out how I feel, getting past things that have tried to hold me back and really me facing myself and getting an understanding like this is what this is. This is why I'm triggered. This is why, you know, I can't move past this because of this. You know what I'm saying? It's just being aware of everything with inside of you so that you can see yourself and move past things that don't serve your highest good, okay? So really just keep pushing through. If it's hard, keep going because eventually you're going to make it to the finish line or it's just not going to be as hard as you thought it was anymore. Simple. <laughs> you're just going to keep on going, okay? So I just want to tell y'all that like to keep pushing. And lastly, for the last card that we have is the lover's card. The lover, lover's card. And this is basically your future. What outcomes could possibly happen? What is your reaction to this card? And what are your unconscious expectations, okay? So we have the lovers, and I love this card, it's so pretty. The Lotus, and this card is basically partnership, union, and duality, okay? So finding the balance within yourself, finding the love within yourself, and having united forces, um, possibly coming into a new relationship, or just a union coming together, creating something beautiful, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. This is basically where you guys can both depend on each other. It's not necessarily just a dependable relationship, but it's a it's a it's a balanced relationship. It's not 80-20. You have 100 and 100. Okay? So you guys can come together and create a good partnership. So, once you've gone through the healing phases, once you've gone through these phases and you've completely healed yourself, you've gone through the hardships, you've gone through all of these things that have tried to hold you back. Once you've made it to the other side, you've got the lover's card, okay? You've got love waiting for you on the other side. That could be um, it, however it shows up for you, okay? It could be with work, it could be in your personal life, finding a new uh, partner or just anything, you know what I'm saying? So heal first is what I feel. This is what I feel like they're telling me. You got to heal first. You got to get past that shit. Because if not, you're going to get exactly what the fuck you don't want. You're going to end up getting the same trauma that you tried to get rid of 10 years ago occurring because you haven't healed that trauma. No. Okay. Don't do that to yourself and don't do that to the next person. Okay. You don't deserve that and neither do they. You want to be the best self for you so that you can be your best self for somebody else. So maintaining your own balance, going within to heal your inner child, going within to heal yourself and notice how strong you really are. Notice that light that you really have. And once you do, you got love on the other side. That could be love within yourself, love within the masculine and feminine dualities within yourself and just feeling completely whole. You know what I'm saying? I, I really feel like that's what they're telling me. It's like once you heal, you will be whole within yourself. That way, when you meet somebody else, you guys can have a balanced partnership. You're not depleted messing with this person or whatever. And everybody goes through what they go, go through. It's a cycle. It's a process. You know what I'm saying? So respect people where they are. But as we heal and as we do this work you got something good on the other side okay so i just wanted to come through and give y'all that and i love that because that really just made me feel really good okay so i hope that message resonates with um some of y'all or all of y'all and if it doesn't resonate take what you can from the message and pass it on to somebody else okay i appreciate y'all and again pass the message on all right so i'm gonna get into the next spread that we have all right so we've got our card shuffled Spirit guide. 
first angels, ancestors, ascended masters, no one unknown. Please show me for the best for my highest good. Please show me the messages we have. I am just all stumbling over. I gotta focus. first card that I have for you guys and again this is your past present and future energy so the current past that I have for you guys is the wisdom wisdom of the divine feminine and from the last spread I literally just said balancing the masculine and feminine dualities within ourselves so we have in your current past the wisdom of the divine feminine okay she has all these pretty flowers in her hair, uh, this fiery hair, okay? It's so fucking dope. Um, let's read this card. I'm going to read this to you guys. This is actually one of my favorite cards. So, the wisdom of, of the divine feminine. So, divine feminine wisdom empowers you to grow into your vision, your dreams, and let fulfillment of your life purpose and the fulfillment of your life purpose. I'm sorry. Um, perhaps you envision a very different life for yourself, what you are experiencing now, than what you are experiencing now. The wisdom reminds you that you can experience even the most extraordinary dreams as reality if you are willing to grow. I can't see these words because the light is like, okay. You are willing to grow into what you desire to become what you seek. Surrender any plans about how you can best manifest your dreams and instead allow life to guide you and nourish you through your experiences each day. The universe supports your divine destiny in helping you and is helping you become all that you are meant to be. When the wisdom of the divine feminine reaches for you, the message is clear. You are in a process of becoming more of heaven on earth. Sometimes there are growing pains alongside the joy such growth brings. You may feel concerned thinking that your pains is an indication that you are failing in some kind of way. You may judge your suffering as a sign that you are not operating as a high enough frequency. Yet, how many spiritual masters upon this planet have endured great, su great suffering, as well as experiencing tremendous love and joy in the fulfillment of their divine destiny? Growing pains are just part of the feminine path of creation, of breaking through, breaking through what has become too small for you. There is a joy in the eventual freedom, but the act of breaking through can feel painful at times. When things are difficult or you are feeling doubt, when you feel the need to do something that scares you and challenges you at any depths of your being, you are experiencing growing pains. They will pass and you will benefit for the growth. However, you need to know that while this difficulty is in your life, the divine is very much with you, encouraging you, believing in you so much that it will deliver a tough lesson. You can handle it for however it needs to continue, however long it needs to continue, and that won't be forever. The divine feminine speaks to you now and promises that you are willing to show up to your life each day and trust in the circumstances before you. She will guide you into the most beautiful divine destiny. It is safe to trust her. She wants for you only the best and most beautiful life journey. One perfectly suited for all that you are all that you are and all that you can be. Your heart beats in perfect rhythm with the heart of the love, heart and love of the center of the universe. Trust your heart and trust life. All is progressing beautifully as you are guided ever deep into your divine fulfillment. Okay? So again, like I said, healing, pushing through. Push through, okay? I'm telling y'all, like, the shit just be coming out. I'm just here, okay? I swear it comes out and I just be wanting to cry sometimes because I'm just like, oh, I get a little bit overwhelmed. Um, because it'd be so good, like I promise y'all. So pushing through if something is too hard for you continue to push through this this is part of our life journey okay it is not going to be easy if it was easy everybody would fucking do it but it's not you know what i'm saying so understanding that this is the way life goes this is the way the universe works okay so continuing to push through continuing to have that inner strength and inner knowing like this is not going to be like this forever i know when i get to the other side i'm going to be okay so just being aware of that okay and continuing to move forward i love that so the next card that we have is the key of light okay key i'm your light hello <laughs> key of light so 
with this card this is your current present okay your current present energies that's operating right now um let's see so the key of life we have archangel michael okay so if you guys are familiar with any angels you want to become familiar with any angels you can start here okay so the key of light um archangel michael is attached to this and he wants you to know that he loves you unconditionally unconditionally and serves you in your journey he brings you a spiritual gift now the key of light this key allows you to open any door uh clear any way of obstruction and free yourself from any prison prison or enslavement physical emotional or psychological there is no need for you to feel trapped or locked out of a situation that you want to get into you now hold within your hands the divine key that will assist you in many ways archangel michael has a message for you he wants you to know that you have the power of the divine in you you have the power of the divine in you you have the ability to free yourself no matter whether it seems that the other person or a set of circumstances or the entire world holds more power than you do. Your power of freedom is unconditional. It doesn't require that outer circumstances change in order for you to be free. Though as you choose freedom, outer circumstances often change radically for you. For now, to be free, use the key of light. This means staying true to what you know for yourself, gently and lovingly asserting your truth now. Do not cave in to naysayers, fear generators. Most especially, do not cap, do not collapse under your own old fears or doubts. Gently and persistently cleaving to the light within will bring you through any apparent obstacle, free you from any apparent prison, and ensure the divine destiny is fulfilled. All doors shall be open to you, and you are being the gift of unconditional space. Step back, radiate love from your center. This way, you do not have to betray your spirituality to fight. You can fight with love and trust that you can be your, it can be your way as a spiritual warrior. In each moment that you choose love and trust, you are fighting the good fight. You are learning that love is expressed in no as much as it is in yes. For when you fight against those who want you to deny the truth, you are standing clear and strong in, in loving truth. Michael helps you realize that the strength that you already have within you to do this. This oracle message for you is to trust in your own ability to triumph right now. You are the key to success. You must believe in yourself. You don't have, a, have to force a door to open. In perfect, time, in perfect time, according to the divine grace, all doors will open for you, okay? Your dreams and actions will provide themselves in time. No person, place, or thing has any power to hold you back. The key of light is a spiritual permission for the, from the universe to succeed in your life mission. You shall not be kept back from your divine destiny and you shall be empowered to succeed. To succeed. So, again, as I say, push through because you know what? You can get through any door you want to go through. You have access to go through any door you want to go to. If a door is not opening for you, that means it's not for you. And take that as a sign, okay? Because rejection is protection. Or the universe and the divine has something greater for you. So be patient, okay? Allow yourself to go through the process. But just know that there is no restriction here, okay? Unless it's in your mind, emotionally, or whatever. But like I said, you can call on these angels and these deities to help you out. So if you're feeling restricted or a little closed out and you want to work through something, you want to you want to go start something new or you just want to go in a new direction, you can call on Archangel Michael. You know, you say in a prayer, you call it, call him out. And before you know it, you will see the situation change for yourself. OK, and just believing in yourself, having firm knowing and inner knowing that. You have the strength to go and do whatever you want to do. You have that power, okay? So I'm going to leave that with y'all. And the very last card that we have is Initiation by Water, okay? That's one of my favorite cards because I'm a Pisces and I'm such a water person. Like, oh my God, it don't make no sense. Like, I am a big water person. I will go take a shower or a bath just because I will... I want to do that and it don't matter if I do that shit four times a day <laughs> it's crazy so initiation by water and this is your future card okay so with this card is basically saying that your spiritual path this lifetime involves you becoming a clear channel for spirit you are meant to communicate with higher guidance from the loving spiritual world your initiation by water will further open your receiving excuse me channels and dislodge lower vibrational material 
and sensitize you. I'm sorry, y'all. These lights is fucking with me. I cannot see these words. Sensitize you to the subtle realms of life. You are being open to the world to which you may only have dreamed. Such is in beauty, is its beauty, grace, and love. Situations have been arising in your world that evoke emotional reactions and challenges your belief systems. You may not feel in control. You may feel like your world, your own emotions have become like a stormy sea in which you are tossed about and you're doing your best not to drown in the chaos. Yet you are not to fear it. It is stirring that which has been held within you so it can be released. Didn't I just say that? I told y'all, I'm not, I told y'all, this shit crazy. The storm will pass and the waters of your emotions shall become more serene. You could compare the process to a glass of water. <laughs> you can compare it to a glass of water with muddy sediment at the bottom. This water clear over here. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> The water appears clear as the mind is left to lie. Yet, once that water gets stirred up, the mud rises. No, I ain't got no mud if I could. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see these words. Then it can be filtered out and the water can be clearer than ever before. There you go. The turbulence was a step that had to lead to greater clarity. The waters in the glass are comparable to your emotional waters. And the fixed opinions, beliefs are long held emotion pattern, emotional patterns based on unresolved past pain. I said this and the sediment at the bottom of the glass. Hold the glass up to the light. Can you see this? Can you see light shine through the sediment? No, but it can be seen through the clear water. Remove the sediment and the water will be clear enough to allow light to shine through without obstruction or dissertation. Distortion, sorry. The light is the light of spirit, of higher truths, unconditional love, peace, wisdom, and joy. You know that you are meant to be a channel for the truths of spirit as an advanced soul. You are capable of successful enduring the pro successfully enduring the process of filtering out whatever would obstruct the clear flow of higher consciousness through your being. Perhaps tired of emotional swings, you have suppressed your emotions and believe you feel nothing, yet you are acting out unwanted behaviors or suffering from apparently random physical accidents, which is the subconscious way of expressing your hidden feelings. If this is the case, you are encouraged to be kind to yourself, to give yourself time to reflect upon your true feelings. Releasing emotional blockages doesn't have to be a drawn out process. It is often the resistance of fear or feeling that with the feelings within that is more difficult than expressing the actual feeling underneath that resistance and finally letting it go. Didn't I just say that? I know I just said that. I know y'all heard me. I know y'all heard me. Whatever pain you are feeling right now is a sign of emotional healing and recovery. You are encouraged to accept the process of your feelings, especially those that do not make much sense to you. Your emotional truths, emotional truths will make more sense as you heal. If you can get help from a healer, therapist, counselor, or, me or mentor, they will support you in your soul, help you resolve your part of the process more swiftly. For the last three cards that I have for you guys, and for some reason, the video cut off, so I already shuffled and I already put y'all cards. I actually already gave y'all a message, but we're gonna redo it. Um, so again, past, present, and future from left to right, okay? So again, the most recent past, we have keepers of the earth. You are not alone. Alone ancestors, ancient ancestors stand beside you. So again, as you do this work, um, you might find yourself possibly feeling alone, possibly feeling like no one understands you. Um, you have no one to talk to, blah, blah, blah. They want you to know that you're not alone, okay? You have angels there to assist you. You have your ancestors there to assist you. You can call on them known or unknown um, that benefits your highest good, okay? Literally, just state what you want and the universe will give you that, okay? But just know that you are not alone. You are safe. You are in the process of healing. So in that healing process, it can be kind of triggering. It can be kind of traumatizing, but you're healing, okay? So that you can move past that and never have to experience that trauma or that pain again, okay? So move Moving forward, we have to take a break, a life lesson, a 
life's work is not a session. Get off the treadmill, okay? So again, take a break. Take some time to rest. You don't have to do everything in one day. You don't have to know everything in one day. You don't have to do anything, okay? So just take time to rest. Take time to go within. Find peace within yourself. Find that balance within yourself so that when you get back to it, you're in a peaceful place, okay? You can manifest what you want to manifest. And that's just, you know, we have to be at a place of peace in order to manifest what we want, okay? And for your future card, we have protection. And it says, call back your power, cut the cords, and soul retrieval. So as you heal, you're calling your power back to you. All that power that you gave to somebody else and you was left depleted, all that power that you gave away and you didn't know where to go, what to do next, you calling your power back to you with going through this healing process. You're calling your power back to you, gaining your strength, gaining clarity, all that within this process. And it's coming back to you. You're getting stronger and stronger as the days go by, okay? Cut the cords. You're cutting cords from old ties, old relationships that probably have tried to hinder you. You're healing your inner child. So you're cutting off that traumatizing cord that was there from 10, 15, 25, maybe 30 years ago that has been trying to linger in your lifetime. You can cut that cord now. You're welcome.